In this tutorial, this beginning tutorial about Adobe InDesign, the thing that I want to remind you is that when you start up InDesign, you're going to have your welcome to InDesign window here. This is just a list of all the previous files I've been working on lately. So I'm going to go to File and Open. And right here, I've gone through Chapter 1, setting up your preferences for InDesign. I'm going to go to my InDesign tutorials in Chapter 2, Concepts, and I'm going to open up Folder 0. Now keep in mind, I said File and Open. So the only thing you will be able to open when you are in InDesign is another InDesign file. You can't open a Photoshop file. You can't open an Illustrator file or a text file. You can only open a previously existing InDesign file. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and open up this file. And immediately, I can see my panels are kind of skewed over here. I've been working with these two panels the last time I was in InDesign. And I don't want to mess on my screen. So what I would recommend is every time you go in on a new day or whatever, or a new week, reset everything. Window menu, workspace, essentials, and again, notice there is an essentials and essentials classic. Okay, the difference between those two is essentials is for those who have used InDesign for a few years. You kind of know where everything's at. This is a stripped down version of InDesign. Not everything's going to be on your screen because they expect that you know where to find the things that you need. Since I'm still somewhat beginning with it with you in InDesign, I'm going to go to Essentials Classic. And the problem is when I picked that, nothing happened on my screen. So you have to reset things twice. Okay, the first time I went to Window, Workspace, and told InDesign I want to work with the classic workspace, but that didn't do anything. It just indicated to InDesign what I intend to use. So now I have to go to Window, Workspace, and a little lower, Reset, Essentials Classic. What that's also going to do is open up your Creative Cloud libraries, and I'm not going to be using that panel. So I'm going to tear that name out, click the X and close it. And instead of keeping my panels collapsed like this into what they call name view, I'm going to hit the double arrowhead up there and expand my panels just so I can see everything that's going on here. And I definitely tend to work on my layers. Okay, the other thing I want to do is over on the left, instead of a single column toolbox, I want to click the double arrowhead up there and go with a two column. That's what I work with. That's what you're going to see in all my demos, so I might as well reset that. Okay, what I have on this page is just a couple little sample objects here. So this little squiggly line right here was drawn with my pen tool. And just like Illustrator, and just like Photoshop for that matter, the thing that goes along with the pen tool is your black arrow and your white arrow. InDesign came in after Adobe Illustrator, so a lot of features on InDesign were pretty much borrowed or outright stolen from Adobe Illustrator. Okay, So if you have a comfortable uh, knowledge of Illustrator, you're going to do just fine in InDesign as well. A lot of the features are working the same. So here's the difference. If I'm on the black arrow and I click and drag and hit that line, you'll notice it shows up in a box or what InDesign calls a frame. I call them containers. Okay, Anything you select or anything you make goes in a container. A squiggly line will go in a container. Text goes in a container or a frame. Picture boxes are frames. Shapes our frames, everything is boxes, shapes, containers, whatever you want to call them. Everything is boxes, okay? So if I selected this line with my black arrow, it shows up in a box, which means I can pull and resituate and reposition that entire line by using my black arrow, much like I would in Adobe Illustrator. If I wanted to change the curvature of this line, 
I go with my white arrow. That's kind of like my editing tool. Same as it works in Illustrator. So now when I click on this line, I don't get the box. I get the individual anchor points. So I can pull this anchor point down, move this direction line up, pull this anchor point down, move that direction line up, and get it to kind of bend and go over my type like that. So the black arrow is kind of like your move tool. If I click on the line, we get the box so I can move the whole thing. My white arrow is my editing tool. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit delete twice. Delete that line off the page. Here's my text. Text goes in a frame. And the thing that's nice about InDesign is when you click on a box and then you simply click on your type, all your text editing features are going to change across the top. Eventually, we're going to cover all of these buttons. This is what overwhelms people in InDesign. One little click and you got a thousand more buttons up here. But they all do great things. It's just a matter of getting to know what each one does. But what's nice about InDesign is one click, I don't even have to highlight the type. Here's my font, and I'll just switch that to impact, and it will instantly change. Okay, Clicking on a text frame with your black arrow is like selecting your text. All of it. You don't have to highlight it. So I'll set that back. Uh, let's just go to edit and undo. Okay, If I want to do change one word, then I would highlight one word. But notice again, this is the trick. With my black arrow, I select, I am selecting the box, the frame. It shows me its distance from the left side of the page, distance from the top of the page, the width of that box, the height of that box. Your black arrow is selecting the container. If you go to your type tool, now you are dealing with what's inside that container. That's really important, okay? With my type tool, now I've got all my type editing features. So just be aware of that. You gotta constantly be looking up here at your uh, control bar. Black arrow, now it goes to the box. Type tool, now it goes to type features. So things are gonna be constantly changing on your screen. You just gotta be physically aware of that. I'll delete that. And this frame right here, notice how it has a big X in it. Okay, Any frame, any container with an X is a graphics frame. This is waiting for me to throw in a photograph or an illustrator file like a logo or an illustration. Okay, These are content frames. So you'll notice oh, down on the toolbox on the left side, there's a rectangle frame tool. And right next to that is a rectangle tool. Okay, the thing that limits some of your possibilities here is when I press and hold, the only graphics frames by default that InDesign is going to let me work with are rectangles, ellipses, or polygons. Okay, those three. Now you can go beyond those three, but that's what it's always going to just start with. Next to that, and you'll notice before I do, every one of these has an X. So I can draw a circle and put a photo in it. I can draw a polygon and put a photo in it. I can draw a rectangle and put a photo in it. Over here, I've got the same ones, the rectangle, the ellipse, and the polygon. The difference is these are for general shapes that you would fill with color or a gradient. So the difference here is this one is my rectangle frame. This one down here that does not have the X, it's just a shape that I wanted to fill with a field of color, is a rectangle tool. Okay, big difference. So here's one other note before I move on from this. You'll notice again that we only have, to start with, rectangles, ellipses, and polygons. But what if I wanted to make a really unique shape that's not one of those? Well, that's where my white arrow comes in. So if I take the black arrow and select, that is like selecting the whole thing. 
I can go inside and move the whole thing because I'm on my black arrow. But if I were to switch to the white arrow, now I don't get that box around this. I get my anchor point. So if I click right here, that's not going to do it. All my anchor points are still selected. So if I'm going to edit a shape, I click outside. Then I click on a corner and I can pull that corner up and edit the shape of that object. Okay, it still has the big X. It's still a container waiting for a photo. Just the photo would fill all the way up to there. Or I could pull this point back down. Maybe put it right there. Put this point right there. And do something a little more triangular. Because in InDesign, you don't have a triangle tool. But there are other ways to make better triangles. Because this one looks all lopsided here. So I didn't quite join my anchor points perfectly. But the thing is, when you start pulling things apart, it's kind of hard to get them back to where they were unless you know the shortcuts. And I'm not going to show you that yet. The main idea is to get a quick rundown of our toolbox. So the other elements right here, you've got a pages tool, which allows you to add pages through the pages panel. Um, there will be a demo on that later. Same thing with the gap tool arranging spaces between boxes. You've also got a content collector and a content placer. Now, I'll be honest, I've never used those. So I might not even cover them, but if I do, it'll be at a demo much later. These are all advanced tools in InDesign. Okay, obviously you've got your type. Type can go in a straight line like paragraphs on a page. Type can also follow a line like that original line. It went up and down and up and down. Type can also follow those lines. If you need to draw just one particular line, you've got a line tool. So I could just click and drag and have a diagonal line. Hold shift and draw a vertical line. Hold shift and draw a horizontal line. I've got my pen tool, just like I do in Illustrator and Photoshop. I can add points to lines that I draw delete anchor points, or convert corners to curves. A lot of the same pen tools you have in Illustrator. If you don't want to draw perfect curves, you've also got freehand drawing, like the pencil tool to literally just scribble something on the page. You can smooth out scribbled lines if you need them. It's kind of like running an iron over your line. Or you can erase sections of a line. Okay, we'll do a demo on that later. Again, this is just a quick run through of the toolbox. Anything with an X is for you to put graphics inside that shape, photos or illustrator files. Anything that does not have an X are fields of color or objects that you want to fill with gradients or swatches, whatever. Um, scissors, you could take a line and cut it into pieces, like literally taking a piece of string and cutting it with scissors. These are all your transformation tools. So if I selected this box, I could go to my free transform and just pull that down and shrink it or pull it across and distort it. I also have a rotate tool, which is kind of ridiculous because if I click and drag with the rotate tool, I could also just be on my free transform. And when I hover near the corner, it's the same thing. So it's kind of redundant to have a free transform and a rotate tool, but now you know. Um, you also have a scale tool, which is kind of ridiculous because I just did scaling with the free transform. There's a lot of repetition here and the shear tool, which allows me to slant objects. You have all of these in Illustrator as well. Okay, down below that, you've got a gradient tool, much like you paint gradients in Illustrator. You have a gradient panel that I'll show you later on to mix your gradients. And you have a gradient feather tool, which is like a fade tool. It's like taking an object in Photoshop, creating a layer mask and painting a gradient to get objects to fade away. So if I filled this with blue, let's say, and I take my gradient feather tool and I click and drag, half of that object 
is going to fade away. So it's like it's just gradually just disappearing. That's the gradient feather. And I'll go to edit and undo that. Okay. Down below that, just like in Illustrator and Photoshop, you have an eyedropper. I don't use the color theme tool. Never had a use for it. So, But I do use the eyedropper tool a lot. And there's some great typography tricks with the eyedropper that I'll show you later. You also have notes in case you want to add a little sticky note to your file as a reminder or a note to a client. If you're sending this file to them, you have the ability to add little sticky notes. Obviously, you've got your hand tool to move pages around on your screen and your zoom tool to zoom in or option and zoom out. Okay. You also have the ability to reset your default colors just like you have in Illustrator. You have a fill and a stroke. And just like in Illustrator, the default is the letter D. The only difference here is that unlike Illustrator, D for default means no fill and a black outline. In Illustrator, D for default means a white fill and a black outline. So there is that slight difference. You also have the default icon right down here in the lower left. You have the ability to switch these colors to now a black fill or switch it back to a black outline when you click that little curved arrow. And if you hover over that, it also says you can hit Shift and the letter X to switch those. You also have your formatting. This is really important later when we get to um, type editing. Okay, if I selected an object and there was text in it, this will say, do you want to change the colors of the box, the container? Or do you want to change the colors of the type that's in the container? So that's really important right there. And you could see you have it right here on your swatches when you're dealing with color changes and type. Are you trying to change the color of the box that the type is in? Or are you trying to change the color of the type itself? And you can see on the color panel, we have the container or the type. Okay. So you've got a lot of those same little icons there that you're going to have to be aware of later on in the semester. Uh, down below that, you have your fill, your gradient, or none. So these are your typical fills. You can fill objects with solid colors. You can fill objects with gradients. Or you can take away the fills. Okay, this is your view options. I want to view edges of my frames. I want to view my rulers and guides and all that stuff. I just leave that alone. This right here is your screen mode. Okay, so I can show where the bleeds are if I had a bleed for this file. Or slugs, we'll get to those later. Or you have presentation mode, which is also a demo that I will show you later. I'm just on preview here. Okay, notice all the X information went away. My border went away. So that's a preview mode. I'm going to click here and, well, now I'm stuck in preview mode. Great. So I'm going to hit the letter W to get out of preview mode. See, as soon as I click that button, you better be aware it's going to toggle the preview. That's it gets rid of all your outlines here. So W will get me back to my frame view mode here. And that is a quick rundown of the toolbox. Okay, you're going to have rulers. You can hit Command R to get rid of your rulers, just like you do in Illustrator and Photoshop. Command R will show you your rulers again. Just be aware, the main elements of your workspace Panels on the right, toolbox on the left, and control bar across the top. You're going to be working all the way around the outside edges. Toolbox, control bar across the top, and panels on the right. All of those to affect what you're dealing with here on the page. So I'll see you in the next video. We'll talk about presentations and previews and how you're going to view things on your screen.